Welcome. Um, this week we're going to do Pasha's Pinchas. So let's begin with um, a few weeks ago we read Pasha's Koyrech. Pasha Koyrech, we read the whole story with Koyrech, his rebellion, and then at the end the earth opened up and swallowed him. The whole story in Pasha's Koyrech. Now, we know that Bnei Koyrech Le Mesu, Koyrech's children did not die. So, I took like an informal survey and I asked a number of people, all kinds of people in yeshiva, not in yeshiva, I asked them, when does it say the Bnei Koyrech Le Mesu? And most people said, it's either a medrash or a gemara, but it's not. It's a pasuk in the Torah. Where's the pasuk? Pashas Pinchas. Let's take a look. So after the beginning with Pinchas, then the Pasha goes on to a census. We have a census of every shevet. It tells us about the shevet, how many there were, and it gives you the total number of people in the shevet. So the first, the first one is Reuven. So it tells what Reuven, who his children are, and then Ubnei um, Falu Aliyav. Ubnei Aliyav, Nemuel Dosen Vaviran. Dosen Vaviran were the children of Aliyav. Who Dosen Vaviran Kriya Eida, Asher Hitzu Al Moshe Bal Aaron, but that's Kairach. Vatiftachar says Pia Vatifl Oisam, but Kairach. Bemais Haida that they all died, the earth opened up, and Dosm Aviron, and the whole Adas Kairach, they all died, they went down into the earth. Vnei Kairach Mesu. This is where it says, Vnei Kairach Mesu. What is it doing here? It's doing, first of all, maybe it should be in Pasha's Kairach. And if it's going to be here, it should be in Shevet Levi. Why is it in the Pekida of Ruvain? That's one question. Also, we're doing over here a census. We're counting the people. So why are we talking about Das and Baviran who are dead? Why are, the, why are they being mentioned here? Of course, we count the living people. We don't count the dead people. Every census only counts the people that are living. Why are we counting Das and Baviran? And then if you look later, Bnei Yehuda, doing a census of Yehuda, which comes out to whatever the Cheshman is. Bnei Yehuda, Erv Oynon, Vayomas Erv Oynon Beretz Knan. He has Erv Oynon, and they died in Eretz Knan. And then the, 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 the Pekida goes through the third son, Shela. Now, Erv Oynon died hundreds of years before. Why are they being mentioned over here in the Pekida of Yehuda? And the same thing you find by the Pekida of Levi. Again, there's, if they're all, the whole Pekida of all the Shvatim, there's a separate mitzvah here to go make a Pekida on Levi. So it says, Vayvoleid l'aran esnodo v'aviyu as a laws of Yisamar. He had four children. Vayom esnodo v'aviyu bakriv mezor l'fnei Hashem. Why are we talking about Nodav Avi? We're doing a Pekida. We're standing over here on the threshold of Eretz Yisrael. We're taking a census. How many people do we have? Why are we talking about Nodav Avi? Why are we talking about Erev Ainan? Why are we talking about Dasan Bavira? So I think that the Pshat is like this. Every person in Klal Yisrael has a purpose. He has a, he has a, a Tachlis. He has um, something that he has to contribute. Claudius Roll is like a huge jigsaw puzzle. It has many, many little pieces. Thousands, millions of pieces. Some pieces are bigger, some pieces are smaller, but every piece fits into this overall jigsaw puzzle. And all of them together create the picture of Claudius Roll where everybody fits together and everybody has a role and they all fit together. Now, every person who has a tachlis of what he's supposed to contribute, when he dies, that is, that is um, 
perpetuated through his children and through his grandchildren and through his great-grandchildren. So whatever role that he has to fulfill in Klal Yisrael is continued through his children and, his, and his, all his descendants. However, what if a person has no children? Then whatever role he has to do is not fulfilled. And then there is a hole in the jigsaw puzzle. So this is what it's saying over here. We're doing a census of Klal Yisrael. So the Torah is telling us, Dos and Vaviro and actually were quite big people. And they had a function, they had a purpose, they had a role in Klal Yisrael. And they died, and they had no children. Everybody died, they and their children. So whatever purpose, whatever role they had to fulfill in Klal Yisrael is, is empty. Is, there's a hole in the jigsaw puzzle. So this is what the Torah is telling you. This is the census, but there's a hole. There's somebody missing. Who is missing? Dos and Vavira are not missing. Why? Because whatever role they had to fulfill, they, didn't, they couldn't fulfill neither through themselves or through their children. So this is what the Torah is telling you over here. So why shouldn't we? So what's with Kairach? So the Torah tells you, Dos and Vavira left the hole. Kairach did not leave a hole. Even though they all went together into the pit, but they left the hole, Kairach left the hole. Why? Because of Bnei Kairach Lai Mesu. That's what he's telling us here. So if you go on by Yehuda, Erv Ainan, Yehuda had three sons, Erv Ainan and Shela. Erv Ainan were the, the sons of Yehuda. So they had an important role in Klal Yisrael, and they died, and they had no children. So whatever role they had to fulfill, whatever role was unique to them, that's a whole. So the Torah tells you the Pekid of Yehuda is incomplete. There is a whole. It's not no Shlemus. And the same thing by Levi. The role of Levi and Nadav Avi were very big people. They were supposedly going to be the successors to Moshe and Aaron. And they died. So whatever they were supposed to do in Klal Yisrael, whatever their function was supposed to be, is, inf- is unfulfilled. So the census of Levi is incomplete. That's why the Torah tells you about the people that died and left no children. But what happens if, uh, so what if a person has no children? Then what? So then he's, uh, he, he has no contribution, he's meaningless. But I just want to refer back to the first Pasek in Toldus. So it says like this, Elu told us Noyach, these are the generations of Noyach, these are his descendants. Noyach is tzaddik tamim. Noyach was a tzaddik, so why? Well, I mean, before he gets to tell you the children are. It tells you that Noyach was a tzaddik. Why does it tell you that? So Rashi has two pshatim. First he says, Zecher tzaddik levracha. And then he says another pshat, Lamedcha, she'ikir told the same shal tzaddikim masim toivim. The, 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 the main tolda is the main generations, the legacy of Sadiqim. Generations are the, are the legacy of the patriarch. The person who has children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, that's his legacy. And they continue his legacy, and that's how he, that, that's how he fulfills his role in Claudius' role. But a tzaddik's main tolda are his maisim toivim. Now it doesn't say his mitzvahs. It doesn't say the Torah that it learns. It says his ma'asim toifim. Ma'asim toifim means gemilas chasodim. So when, it, when the tzaddikim, they do chesed, they do gemilas chasodim, then that has a great effect on their surroundings, on their, on their sviva, on the kehila. It has a great effect. And that is, creates a chain reaction. You know, you do chesed, so that causes more chesed, causes different things. So whenever the, the tzaddikim, they do maisim toivim, that sets into motion a long chain reaction. And there, and that chain reaction goes down from generation to generation. It's not only during their lifetime. That effect of their maisim toivim is in the next generation, the next generation, and goes through all generations. So the maisim toivim are the totals of tzaddikim. So if a person has a role to fulfill and, is, and he... Uh, he does Maisim Toivim. So then, he is, he, his death is not a, a hole in the jigsaw puzzle. It's not a hole in Klal Yisrael. Because, what, because his, 
his role is fulfilled through the Maisim Toivim that he does. However, Tos and Vaviron were not Sadiqim, and therefore, the only way they could have uh, told us, they could have uh, the legacy should go on, is only through children. The children died along with them. Uh, Erva Ainan were also, we don't see anywhere they were Sadiqim, and they were big Balei Chesed, we don't see that. So again, if they die, and they left no children, there's a hole in the puzzle. And, this, and what's with Nod of Aviyu? Nod of Aviyu were very big Sadiqim. But Nod of Aviyu were really, had a, a tremendous role in Klal Yisrael. They were destined to become the, the, the leaders of Klal Yisrael. So the Maisim Toivim that they did will, will compensate for part of the whole, but the rest of what they were destined to do is not compensated by Maisim Toivim, and therefore their absence needs to be mentioned in the census of Sheva Levi because there's a hole in the census of Shevet Levi. Okay, now, let's go a little bit further in the Pasha. So, Vaidabra Moshe al Hashem Leymar. This is after the story of the Bnei Slavchad, that they came and they said, uh, you know, they wanted a Yarshan for, from their father. So after that story, and the Ban Shalom said that in Yerusha, the, if there are no sons, the daughter Yasha is the father, and otherwise it would be his brothers, his male relatives. But he said, no, if there's a daughter, then the daughter Yasha even though there are male relatives. So after this parsha, then Vaidabra Moshe Hashem Lamar, the only time in the Torah we have this kind of uh, pasuk where Vaidabra Moshe Hashem Lamar, usually it's the other way around. It says, Yifkai Hashem Malakei Ruchais Lechal Basar Ish Halo Eida. He's as saying to the Rabbi Nishloilam that after he dies, that the Rabbi Nishloilam should appoint somebody who will succeed him will be a leader of Klal Yisrael. Don't leave them like sheep without a shepherd. So the the Rechaim right away asks, why does Moshe have to be Mizaraz the Rabbeinu Shloilam like he has to urge him and motivate him that he should make sure that 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 they that they're not left, uh, you no know, leaderless, wandering sheep. That the Banshan pointed a leader, he'll point another leader. Why is he? Why is he saying Yifka Hashem Keiruchas? And if he, what does he want? Of course, when he when he when he's nifta, somebody else will be, somebody else will, will will be the one. What does he want? Another question is that if you look in Pasha's Devarim. So this is uh, Moshe Rabbeinu is, is uh, reviewing the history of Klal Yisrael and the Midbar. So now he's talking about the Maraglam. Now in, in our parsha, he's standing here. He's on the threshold of, of Eretz Yisrael. He is uh, about facing the end of his life. Now the Maisa of the Maraglam was 38 years earlier. So he says like this. Gambi is son of Hashem Beglauchem Leymar. Hashem got angry with Kaviochel, that he got angry with the Moshe, and he said, What did he get angry about? Because Moshe Lemaisa sent him, sent him a raglam. He didn't have to. He decided to send him a raglam. And it was a disaster. So the Bunchman got angry and said, Gam ato lo You are not going to come to Eretz Israel. Yeshua ben Nun Oemid Lefanecha. Yeshua ben Nun Yotalmed, who Yavai Shoma, Oisei Chazek, who Yanchilenu as Yisrael. So he told him 38 years before that Yeshua would be his successor. So what's his problem now? Why is he saying you should have a, you know, Ishal Oeda, you shouldn't be son Shalom Roya, what's with Yeshua, he's not a good Roya. What is it, I mean, what does he want? And Rabban Shalom answers him, Kach Yeshua ben Nun, Take Yeshua Benon. 
Yeshua is already designated 38 years old. Earlier, all of a sudden, now he's telling him Yeshua Is Is he reminding him now? He's telling him to do it now. Be, be, make smicha now. Now, Rashi says, what, what does Moshe want? Kiv Moshe Shama Moshe, Sh'omalei HaMokam ten nachla l'tzavcha, ten nachla slavcha l'bno Yisof, give the nachla v'tzavcha to his daughters. Amari said, Higiyah sho she'et v'tzrochai. Now I'm going to ask what I need. What do I need? She'yir shubana es gedulasi. He wanted his sons should be his successors. They should inherit his position. That's not, uh, this is not what I want. So it should be Yeshua. Now, the, what the connection of the, the Bnei Slavchad, I would think, is that the Bnei Slavchad were, were uh, generally the male is the one that's, that inherits. I don't know, it's the Chiddush over here, that uh, that the daughters inherited, because I guess the, the, they have a primary role in society. So that the males are the heirs and not the daughters. However, if there are no sons, then the bunch of mechadish that the daughters, even though they're not on the same level as the father's brothers, but nonetheless the daughters they should inherit. So this, I guess, what Moshe was saying, that even though his sons are are not on the level of whoever else it could be, if it would be Yeshua or Pinchas or Asnil Beknas or whoever, you know, but they're not on that level. However, you see that when it comes to your own children, if you don't have children that are on, the, on that level, then, then the ones on a lower level can also yashin. So therefore, I want that my, my sons should, should inherit my position, even though they're not equal to other people. That's what he was saying. And the bunch on top, no, I want Yeshua. So what exactly, so this is basically the question. What is going on over here? Yeshua was appointed 38, 38 years before, and now Moshe wants his children, and he's saying to the bunch of them, make sure you don't leave them leaderless. How would they be leaderless? You have Yeshua. What is going on here? So, about the, you know, Mies Hashem, when we get to Pasha Shoftim, to the midst of Sam Tos Melech then, you know, I w- I'll discuss this topic at greater length. But, but at least this, I'll tell you part of it now, is that um, why did they wait for 400 years to be Mekai in this mitzvah of Sam Tos Melech HaMelech? And when they asked for a Melech, why did Shmuel get upset? And why did Hashem told them, Loi Bechamos, well, Bimosu, they didn't reject you, they rejected me, because I Ani Malcolm, and now they're rejecting me. But there's a mitzvah of Sam Tosan Lachamelech. So we'll get into all the nuances a little bit later with the way they asked and what they asked. But the point is that that in the Kufas Hashem, in those 400 years, the Pasuk says, Bayom Mahem Ein Melech be Israel. Everybody did what they wanted. Now this is l'shvach and l'gnai. It's l'gnai because they did whatever they want and they did averis. It's also l'shvach because if they did mitzvahs and they, they lived properly, then they did it without anybody controlling them, without anybody telling them what to do. Who told them what to do? The Torah. If that had a question in the Torah, he used to go to the Rav. They went to the Shaifet. The Shaifet was the Rosh, was the, the head of the Sanhedrin. He used to go to the Shaifet. That to know Pashat, what is the Allah? But once you know what the Allah is, they didn't need any kind of government to control them. So that's, so they were Ein Melech B'Yisrael. It was, it was anarchy. It means, anarchy means no government, anarchy. But anarchy is not necessarily chaos. If, there's, if the people are self-regulated and they follow the Torah and they obey what the Bansham tells them to do, then it's only anarchy, it's not chaos. So this is, the, this is what they were trying to do. They were trying to create a society because the purpose of the Melech is not to be 
you know, uh, a president, uh, 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 you know, a chief executive to manage all the departments and the military. No, the mitzvah of Sam Tosh Melech means to be that ultimate manig who's going to bring Klal Yisrael to the highest levels of Ruchnias. That was, that was the purpose. So in order to bring in such a person, it was necessary at first to, I mean, that was the ideal, to establish a society which is able to function without a government, without an executive branch, just to have a Sanhedrin to rule on what the halach is. And that executive branch, and so, 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 but that is only possible if, if the society is stable. Now during the Kufus HaShayftim, there were, there were ups and downs. They were, it says, uh, these type of, of periods where they were, were self-functioning. That, the Pasuk says in one Pasuk, a few places, Harboim Shona Shokta Oretz. The, all the stories of, of, of Shaiftim are all about the downfalls where they get influenced by the, by the, by the, by the pagans and they start doing a Vaidazara and then they have to get a Shaiftim to go mobilize them and, and, and inspire them. And it's, these are all the stories with the ups and downs. But every once in a while there was Arboim Shana Shakta Aretz. Forty years it was good. It was the right thing. Shmoinim Shana Shakta Aretz, another Pasuk, 80 years. Things were great, you were doing the right thing, it was going there, but it wasn't stable. It wasn't stable. You had a long stretch where it worked, and then back to chaos. So that wasn't stable. So, so Claudio was not ready for the king that, that the mitzvah was given, it was, it was telling them to have this Manig Ruchni, who's not going to have to dirty his hands with politics and managing the government and all kinds of executive issues. He's not going to have to do that. So they were not ready. But, in, but they asked for a melech because they wanted to fight with Nachash HaMaini. They needed a melech who was going to organize. That was not what the mitzvah was. So really, in the, there was a shaifet and then there was a melech. Moshe was a melech. Moshe was a melech. 38 years earlier, when it says that Yeshua is going to be who Yehovah Yesa'am, that means Yeshua will be the Shaifet. Moshe was also a Shaifet, which we'll talk about in Pashat Vayelach. But Moshe was the Melech, and Yeshua, he told him, after you, Yeshua will be the Shaifet. Not a Melech, will be the Shaifet. And you see that because the Pasuk says, the Pasuk says in, in Devarim, it says, Uyavoy Esaam, he will come, he will come with the people, he will come with the people, and in Beschanan it says, But Savas Yeshua Haskevam Seyu, Kihu Yavar Lifneyam, he's gonna go in front of them, he's gonna become a leader. When did he become a leader? When did he become a Melech? Yeshua was a Melech, the Gemara says. Yeshua became a Melech here in Pasha's Pentecost. This is where he became a melech. So by 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 um, by the time of the miraglim, he only became a shayfet. He only said he's going to be a shayfet. After you, Yeshua will be your successor at shayfet. But melech, he didn't say. Now, what Moshe was saying here says He was being mispalo that the tkufas hashayfetim started was, maybe it was going to start with Yeshua. That Yeshua will be the Shaifet, and that Kuvah the Shaifetim will start with Yeshua. Not with Asneel ben Knaz. We'll start with Yeshua. So he said that they are not ready for this. The coming out of Mitzrayim, they were Avodim, and in the Midbar, they were, uh, you know, everything, they had the Mon, they had everything. Now the coming to Israel, they have to fight a war of conquest. They have to go down, go, go live normally and have businesses and farms, they're not ready for this type of, uh, of a society, this utopian society, which is, which is anarchy, which can live, with, which can exist without a government. They're not ready for this. So, they need a melech. They need somebody who's going to control the society, not just somebody who's going to be um, 
uh, set an example and inspire them and bring them high. They need a melech, just like later, without, briefly, like when they asked for a melech, who were they given? They were given Shaul. Shaul was not from Yehuda, and his mitzvah of um, mitzvah, Eliyasa Shev is Yehuda. A melech has to be from Yehuda. And they were given Shaul. What's the pshat? Farshim speak about this. Now the pshat is that Shaul was not that melech that was the mitzvah of Sam Tosun Lechomelech. He was just a, 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 he was a governor. He was a, a, a chief executive. That was his job. He did not, his was, now what would be with Leyosa Shev Mehuda? So we'll talk about this in Shaiftim. But what would be afterwards if Shaul hadn't, if he had not uh, sinned, then if he could have, uh, could have continued, what would have been? Okay, it's a different topic. But what Moshe was saying is that since we need somebody who's going to run the society, so let my children do this. That's what he said. Yeshua should be the shaifet, absolutely. Who's going to be the melech? The melech should be my children. Because I see by Bnei Slavchad that, uh, that even a secondary level uh, um, heir could, could inherit if it's a child. So over here, these are my children. Let them inherit this. So Rabban Shalom told them, no. He said, it has to be Yeshua. Yeshua will be a Melech. He will be a Melech. He'll be both. He'll be a Melech who's going to control. He's also going to be the Rebbe, the, 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 the Godel, the, the Tzaddik, and he's going to do everything to be Yeshua. And Taka, he, he agreed to his Tvila, he answered his Tvila, and he said, we will not start Kufus Shai from now. We'll start the Kufa Shaiftim after we come into Israel and after we conquer the land and we settle it. The Pasuk says, You don't put the Melech before the conquest to help you conquer it. No, first you have to conquer it. Then you have to settle it. After that, hopefully you'll have a stable society like they tried in the Kufa Shaiftim. Then you could have a Melech. That the Melech will not be corrupted by being busy with things that he shouldn't be busy. I want to conclude with one thing, that the Melech should go out in front of them and should come back in front of them. So Rashi says, not like the Malchi Umais, that they sit in their palaces and they send out the armies. No, he's going to go out in front of them. Now, really, they should, to go out in front of the army and into battle is a very risky thing. And even the generals, Gen usually, a general will not be in the front of the army. He'll stay all the way in the back, and he'll direct it, what he, what he do. But he's not going to go into the heat of battle. Well, there's a good chance he'll get killed. You know, you could afford to lose uh, a sergeant, lieutenant, but a general is a big loss. So you have to take care of that. Be, well, he shouldn't be in the front. So what is the purpose he says should go in the front? Why is he going to go in the front? And why is that such a big thing? Okay, that's one question. And the other question is, he said that he, should, that he should go out in front of them and he should come back in front of them. When you're coming back from the battlefield, you won, it's over, you, you were successful. You're coming home, why does the Melech have to walk in front of the army? I mean, let him do what he wants. So why, what's the purpose in walking in front of the army? So I want to say, I think it's, uh, it's Gans Pashat, that when the Melech goes out, this Melech that he says, that he's asking for, he should go out in front. It doesn't mean that you go out in front with his brandishing a sword and saying, charge, you know, and, and you know, let's go, and let's this, and, you know, that's not, that's not what his purpose is to go in the front. The purpose of the Melech going in the front is to set an example for the people. How does an Er Lechayid, how does a Tzaddik, how does Yerei Shemayim go out to battle? Does he go with blood curling, screams, war cries, battle cries? No, he goes out by Hachno, he goes out with, uh, with his fill on his lips, he sang a capital Tillim, he's a Biteach and the Rabbeinu Shleilam. That's how he goes out. He goes out understanding that there's no Koich of Yaitzim Yodi. That's how he goes out. And that's why he should walk in front. Then the people are going into, into battle and they look at the Melech and they look at how he's going. That will inspire them and teach them how do you go to battle. Don't go like a Vildechaya to battle like these pagan soldiers. You go like an Erlachayi to go to battle. And who are then, when you come back from battle, 
it's also important to have the Melech walking in front. Don't come back from battle, you know, saying, we won, you know, Didon Natsach, or whatever. <laughs> we won, and we, we beat them, and we, and we you know, we're, we're victorious, you know. <laughs> That's not how you go back. That's not how you go back. You, come, you go back with a shvach bado through a bayin shalom with hakara that everything was the siyata the shmaya. You go back with 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 being with giving toida to the bayin shalom. That's how erelchi goes back, and it's important when they're coming back. The mel should go in front and set an example to the people. How does a person come back in battle? Thank you very much, and I hope to see you again next week.